hello, welcome, welcome, welcome to a bit late Warhammer Sunday. It's 3pm, apart from it's not. Now, I need to make sure, because I've tweaked some things. Can you all hear me okay? Is the volume acceptable for the speaking? As usual, I've had issues with audio, so I need to make sure you can all hear me. Welcome everybody, welcome everybody. It is Warhammer Sunday. <sighs> I don't think there's any, we might have a few new people in, but as always, it is uh, that time of the week when I sit down and work on my... Uh, Warhammer Army, the unending forces of the Holy Contrivance, my Principality of Zeon, a themed Warhammer Imperial Army. Um, and, as I usually work on stuff during the week, weekend is my Warhammer time, and I share that with you guys, because I'm going to be sat here painting anyway. So I do a little stream, a bit later today, 8pm rather than 3pm, because uh, I know Chris, is, Chris was down at Telford today, as was a lot of other people. And I had the chance to not have to do it so early and some of the reasons, so I thought I'll do it at 8 o'clock. So hello to everybody who's been able to join us this evening. Some people have asked me do, to do it a bit later every now and then as well, just purely because some people, this is a better time for them. So I might vary it round a bit every now and then. But welcome, welcome. If you've not been to one of these before, <clears throat> it's literally a couple of, couple of three hours of me just trying to do some work, but probably mostly just farting about and talking to you guys. Uh, as always, I'm going to be working on my army <clears throat> a little bit. Uh, we will be having the Wheel of Giveaways today, where I will pick, or rather the Wheel of Giveaways will pick a prize uh, that one of you guys or girls can win. Uh, we've got some good prizes in the box. Uh, what else have we got? We're going to give some stickers away later on, of course. Uh, and of course we're still doing the stream boss battle. Aviad right now is down to 8, 81,254 healths. If you don't know what this is, it's the stream boss battle. Uh, one of you guys uh, is the stream boss. In this case it's uh, viewer Aviad Madar. You can see, where's the camera? You can see him there. He's the current stream boss. Uh, you guys battle to get his health down to zero by doing... Uh, by subscribing, by doing super chats, or by doing tips to the tip jar, which is down there, that address there, streamlabs.com forward slash model making guru. Uh, and every time you do a tip or a super chat, or you subscribe to this channel, if you've not already subscribed, you get a bit of his health down. Whoever gets him down to zero can win potentially two to three hundred quids worth of Games Workshop kits of their choice. I will buy them for you, I will send them to you, all free of charge. So... Uh, if you've not seen that before, that's how you play. So get doing your... If you're not a subscriber already, subscribe to this channel. Hit the little notification bell. It takes a bit of Aviad's health off. Uh, you can do Super Chat if you want to. It's the little dollar sign at the bottom of the chat window. That also takes a bit of his health off. And the tip jar, which is the address at the bottom down there, uh, that also takes some health off. And the bigger your tip or the bigger your Super Chat, the more health you take off. And now it's been a bit slow on the stream boss battle lately. It's been a bit... Not been a lot going on, so the longer it's left, obviously, you know, there's, it's going to be potentially a couple hundred quids worth of stuff to win, so you need to get it moving, otherwise nobody's ever going to win it, and I'll just sit here doing this every week, and nobody will ever win all the lovely, lovely things, so get your, get your super chats and tips coming in. Don't forget, of course, Aviad can also do tips of his own, and every time he does a tip or a super chat, he puts his health back up a little bit, so keep that in mind, he can slowly boost his health back, and then you'll never get rid of him. And then when you become when you become stream boss, when you if you get into zero, you win all the lovely jubblies and you become stream boss. So keep it going. Uh, what else are we going to be doing tonight? Well, that's about it really. We're going to see if we can get some work done. Might not be the full three hour uh, program because it is a bit late and there's some stuff I need to do a bit later on. So so yes, uh, what have I been up to? Um, doing some bits and bobs during the week. Still got this thing going. It's been the longest build I've ever been doing. It's taken forever to paint this thing because I'm only doing it on the streams and it's taken a lifetime. And this bit on the back here, you may notice this little piece here is the little steps that go on the back. If they haven't snapped off four times already, oh, I'm going to just leave them off because they're going to break. If I, if I keep breaking them off painting it, they're going to break when they go into transportation. Uh, yesterday I spent, well, Friday and yesterday I spent pretty much all day doing filming for the Warhammer Conquest series. I'm filming the first proper episode. This is all the dudes from issues one to six of the Warhammer Conquest. It's the Hachette Park Works uh, that's available in the UK and the Republic of Ireland at the moment. And this is just issue one to six. And I thought, oh, it'll take me long. I can just spend some time Friday, Saturday. I'll get the first episode film filmed where I'm just painting up the first batch of figures with the first few paints, because you only have six paints to start with. First batch of figures, first few paints. Won't take long. Yeah, it took me all day yesterday to get the uh, the Space Marines painted to the end of episode issue six, which is just basically the blue, black, gold, and lead belcher. 
yeah, it took all day to get that. And I've got some gold trim on the Chaos Space Marines. It's taken me a day and a half just to do that. Ugh. So yeah, it, filming is underway for this, but it's just taken forever. I've done the how to make them. I'm doing the how to paint them bit. And I've had issues seven to 10 now. So I need to get that doing. So everything's piling up on this Warhammer Conquest side of things. So yes, so it's coming along. Uh, the only thing I'm not sure about, if you're not sure what this is, the Warhammer Conquest, it's the part work where you basically, over the course of the next year and a half, you get to build up an entire Space Marine and an entire Chaos Marine, Chaos Army. Um, over about 80 issues. You get all vehicles and figures and everything. Now the only problem is you've got the Pox Walkers and you, I've actually, I primed them, it doesn't say to prime them in the magazine, so I primed them and I've just painted them Death Guard Green. But when you get them, they're actually just Death Guard Green colour plastic. But you don't, when you paint the flesh on in the first few episodes, you just paint bits of flesh on them. And it's like, well, hang on, but what are we going to paint the rest of the flesh? Well, it's not, they're not green. So I'm a bit confused as to how we're going to paint those guys. But we'll see, because they're just kind of like bare flesh colour with a bit of a rotting hue to them. Yeah, the magazine has you paint bits of them flesh colour. So I'm like, that's weird. Very strange. Yeah, so yes, yeah, so that's coming on anyway. Let's have a look and see who is in the chat. I say, it might be a slower, a quicker programme tonight because it's a bit later than normal. Uh, Red Lair, Andy McLeish, Gaz Vickers are all in. Mark Scale Models, welcome you guys. Dad's in. Hey, Dad. Uh, Dad's your mod. And I know Chris from Gross Models is in as well, both modding at the moment. Uh, welcome to you, Dad. Hope you had a good day at Telford. Dad and Dave Weiser on Gumbarker and Scott Sutherland from Orkney and Paul and Chris and Ted. Um, and others of you all went down to the model show at Telford today. So I hope you all had a good day. I know some of you were there yesterday. Big coffee, by the way. Giant coffee, look at the size of that. I know some of you were there on the Saturday as well. I wasn't able to make it this year, sadly. But it looks like everybody had a good time. Who else have we got in? Uh, do, 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 Death 0079. Now, this is much easier time to make it, he says, or she says. He or she says. Yes, uh, some people have said, can I do a later show every now and then because it's easier for them. So I'll, I'll vary it around between three and eight sometimes. But I, do, I don't normally want to cross Chris does his in the evening war hamster thing now. So I don't really want to cross with that. But he's not doing it tonight. So let's have a look. Um, who else we got? Adrian Levy's in. Welcome, welcome. Um, Pascal Leaverse is in. Ghost Lyle is in. Pineapple. Hello, humans, he says. Uh, Dave Barker's in. Andy McLeish. George Webstale, welcome. I've not seen you in chat before. Welcome, George. George says, your views on Vallejo model air acrylic paints, please. They are readily available to me here in Ireland, so I'm thinking of trying them. Um, they are really, really good. I just happen to have a couple here. <laughs> uh, I have some particular ones I would recommend. Depends what you're painting, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, there's Vallejo, the, the bog standard Vallejo colours which are just general, generalistic model making paints. They're very good, you'll need to thin them down a bit to airbrush them. Uh, you've got Vallejo Game Colours, which are these. Uh, and these are designed to be a kind of analogue to the Citadel paints. They're a bit more dense pigment than the regular standard Vallejo paints. So they're a bit bolder, they're a bit brighter and they give you a bit better coverage. Uh, and again, these are really nice. You need to thin them a bit to airbrush them, but they are really nice. They're great to brush. The regular paints are a bit thick for brushing. Uh, these are just about right for brushing. There's also Vallejo Air. Now, I don't have any Vallejo Air, I don't think, here. Uh, I don't have any Vallejo Air, but Vallejo Air are basically more paints, but they're designed to be thin enough to go straight into your airbrush. You don't need to thin them. It depends on your airbrush. You might have a little bit of thinner, but for most airbrushes and compressor setups, you don't need to thin them. Again, they're really nice colours. There's a new range, Vallejo Mecha Colour which are designed, they're really designed for people painting Mecca and Gumpla and things like that, but anybody can use them. These are super, super thick pigments, so they're super dense. <clears throat> so you could, I painted one coat of this over something and it just covered it all. So the pigment's really dense and they're supposed to be quite tough and hard wearing because a lot of Mecca, if you don't know, a lot of Mecca uh, have movable, poseable joints and these are designed to be quite tough for acrylic paints because acrylic paints aren't very tough. So these are designed to be a bit tough. So they're really, they're really bold, bright colours and they're really dense, thick pigments. Uh, and there's also uh, Vallejo Metal Colour, which you can't read because that's a really bad label. Let's get one of the other ones, hang on. Uh, Vallejo metal colours, there you go. There's a range of these, all different colours, like uh, this is burnt iron, you've got dual aluminium, you've got jet exhaust, you've got exhaust manifold, lots of other different colours. These are beautiful, beautiful metallic paints that you don't need to thin them to airbrush them, you can airbrush them neat because they're quite thin. 
Um, you don't want to use them on a wet palette because again, they're really too thin. These are brilliant. They're really, really fine pigments. So you can brush them on and they'll look like shiny metal. So if you're doing shiny metals, they're almost impossible to beat those for just the niceness of them. So in summary, yes, Vallejo colors are really, really good. I personally, when I'm doing color painting, I personally love to bits the Citadel paints. So if you can get Citadel paints, they're, they're awesome. They're no use for airbrushing. You have to fart around to airbrush them, but for brush painting. But for if you can't get Citadel paints or if the Vallejo ones are easier for to get, they're just fantastic. They're absolutely brilliant. So yes, those and Citadel are two of the best brush painted paints. Hope that answers your question. <laughs> uh, who else we got in? Chris from Gross Model. Zadster is in. Uh, evening, folks, he says. Uh, Faisal is in. Hello, Faisal. Uh, -ba Give Ted my best, says Annie McLeish. Uh, heard from him, but not to say he's home, Chris says. Dad, somebody was asking if Ted managed to get home. <clears throat> Ted was able to get a lift off his daughter uh, to Telford this weekend. He was going to go on Saturday, but then he was able to go today. Uh, we were all a bit panicky about him driving all the way to to Telford uh, by his Todd because he's you know he's been poorly sick recently so but he managed to make it today looks like he had a good time uh Chris says he's trying to edit a video today Yeep. you've been filming people haven't you without them knowing it uh, do, 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 do. let's have a look what else has been going on in there everybody's talking about Telford uh, I hope that all of you who went to Telford spent a ridiculous amount of money on lots and lots of kits I'm gonna guess that Scott bought like a thousand Macava kits uh, and Dad, I would say, is going to have bought, let's guess, something to do with the Space Shuttle. He's going to have gone on to the bloke that sells kits for £2 each, where it's a box, and you can't, it's like it's like a 50-year-old box, and he's got stacks and stacks on them. He's going to have bought one of those. Dave will have bought some resin. Uh, would have Dave bought some resin? I don't know. He'll have bought some figures, I think. He'll have got something. I know. And I don't know if there was, I don't think anybody there would sell any Warhammer, so I don't think they'll have picked up any Warhammer, so I don't know. I'll wait and see. But everybody, everybody would have spent a fortune. If I'd gone, I would have spent a fortune. Uh, everybody's saying they can hear me. That's fine. Uh, <clears throat> do what else has been going on? Uh, Lynn Dipples in. Hey, Lynn. Welcome, welcome. Jerry, finally back in the fold. There you go. Welcome, Jerry. Adrian Levy's in. If I miss you, by the way, I do apologise. I'm doing my best to whiz down the, the chat. John Bias is in. Welcome, John. John is the John makes like about 400 models a week, and I don't know how he does it. I just, I know how he does it, but it's like, <laughs> I do like one a model a year, and he's doing like, here's 16 different models I made last week. Wow. I don't know how you do it. Uh, Dave Barker says he bought a um, fine mould something, but I don't know what. Uh, so if you went to Telford today, what did you buy? What did you spend all your hard-earned cash on? I would have spent a fortune. Well, I probably wouldn't, actually, because I don't think anybody ever selling Warhammer, but I, if I, I could have spent a fortune. If I'd gone, but I didn't. So if you did go, uh, what did you buy? What did you buy? Uh, let's have a look. Um, James Lormore's in. Uh, Slappy Milk Toast. I like that name, Slappy Milk Toast. Uh, and it's thanks to the game Persona 4 that I discovered the word Milk Toast, the proper word Milk Toast. It's a lot, you learn a lot of things playing video games. Uh, LD's in. Welcome, Al. Sergeant Bones in. Hey, Sarge. Do, do, do. LD was looking at the International Centre at 3.45 and almost did it, but the wife showed me uh, Rational and went for some grub. Boss was a knob, done loads of overtime this week, wouldn't let me leave early. Oh, I just, I just, you know, get a different job. Get, well, or just, just fire, fire your boss. Somehow get rid of your boss, somehow, legally. <sighs> uh, we missed a build-off by three hours, says James Larimore. Uh, James says he's working on a diorama. He said on a World War II diorama. Gundam diorama. Cool. Uh, Team Inept. Well, he was pretty accurate with his purchase guesses, wasn't he? Says Team Inept. Uh, Paul. Oh, Paul's in. Hey, Paul. Paul from Glue to the Sprue, who signed in as Team Inept. I'm going to guess Paul. Paul will have bought some resin shenanigans. He will have bought some figures. Some resin figures. I'm going to guess Dad and Dave, actually. probably There's probably a stall that's all resin stuff. And they probably bought something like... Uh, I don't know. Like the, the people that do like, little busts of characters and I don't know minions and things like that somebody's going to have bought one of them Paul's going to have bought some figures some knockoff figures or figures from a, a resin casting stall I reckon uh, team in it Paul says yes I made several donations to some nice men in exchange for resin yes um, uh, gross model says he hasn't guessed what I bought I don't know what you bought I don't know what you would have got you're not into tanks 
so you wouldn't have been following Scott around uh, when he got his... Scott met the guy that designed the Macava or something, is that right, Scott? And He's not in, is he? Well, I'm asking him. Apparently Scott met the guy that designed... I don't know, something like I got some books signed. Uh, I don't know what you bought, Chris. The only thing I can think that you would buy would be... Uh, that would be there. I don't know. I don't know what would be there. I'm going to guess... I can't imagine there'd be much Gumpler there. I know somebody's put a picture up of some machine in Krieger, but it's not 144 scale, so... Hmm. Chris, we all know you bought 144 sausage rolls. Chris says he never will. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Chris bought a model or books. I, I, he's going to have bought a model, and it's going to have been... I don't know what people would have been selling, you see? Because I know that I can't imagine there'd be any Warhammer there. Well, there might have been. Uh, I can't imagine there would have been... Uh, I can't see him buying any Gumpler. Not that there'll be any Gumpler there. I don't think much. There might be a little bit. He likes his 1144th. Uh, hmm, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Paul says to George Webb's Delph, if model air, you don't need to thin. Uh, yes, if you're using Vallejo Model Air, you don't need to thin them for airbrush. You don't actually need to thin them to um, to paint with a brush either. They're thin enough. You don't even want to put them on a wet palette because if you put them on a wet palette, they'll just fade away because they're that thin already. Uh, let's have a look. Paul may have been walking lopsided with the amount of resin stuff he got, but I can neither confirm nor deny this, says Dave Barker. Yeah. I'm dead jealous because I would have been in there like going, oh, look at all the things, and then I wouldn't have bought much anyway. Uh, -do, he bought a genuine war hamster with scale armor, says Speedy Q8. I may have bought some resin, says uh, says Chris. <gasps> resin, you say? What resin would you have bought? You would have bought like a figure of some sort, but I don't know. Though you're not really into figures, are you? Figures isn't your bag. Hmm. Wow. I, I don't know then. In that case, I don't know what you bought that's resin. I'm intrigued now. I am intrigued. I want to see. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me with words and talking and everything. Right. What am I going to do today? Um, uh, not so average builder says yeah I learned that I'm not proud of it about the Vallejo air and not needing to thin or use a wet palette Paul uh, Paul says he got a 200mm X display figure for £10 because it was broken test mule woohoo it's an expensive test mule Paul test mule is like you know a, a £2 airfix kit uh, James Lorimer has two 1144th Leo kits cool You'll have to wait for the video, says Chris. Oh, making me go on and watching stuff. I don't know. Right, where's my painting mat? <sighs> right, so what are we doing today? Uh, we're still doing the Torox Prime. Still doing the Torox Prime. I keep meaning to do stuff off camera, but I never do. So, uh, Dave says, we did try and find a Jar Jar figure for somebody, but alas, none were to be found. Yes, huge win. Huge win. Uh, oh, I've got a new wet palette, by the way. I think I told you last week. It's just the it's a pack that comes with tufts, Warhammer tufts. I just emptied it out, and made it into a made it into a thing. I had my cracker jacks. I got all the stickers from inside the cracker jacks. I like the dog. They can't come off now. It's like welded on there. Uh, all those American snacks I got the other day, they've all gone now. They've all just gone completely. They're all just Mama Fox decimated them. So they are just gone completely. Right, what are we doing? Uh, today we are going to uh, I've got to do some layering on, on, I'm not going to do edge highlighting because I don't really believe in edge highlighting that much, it just kind of looks a bit pants, uh, I'm going to do some layering on the bed rolls and the backpacks, I've got to do some layering on the bumper, on the bed, on the big sort of tarpaulin thing that's on the bumper. Uh, I've got to pick the dudes. I've still got to do the dudes. I've not even I've not decided what I'm doing with the dudes. Not started on the dudes yet. Uh, on the roof, I have. Not really going. I'm not really tempted to do too much more. I want to do some chipping. Obviously, I'm going to put some chipping on it. Uh, and then I think I'll do like I'll do layering on the fabric so those things I'll do some chipping all over in places and I think I'll just start the weathering then get the decals on and do some weathering I don't think I'm going to make it too battered because the idea is that my Tempesta Scions are going to be teamed up with my Char Asnable Custom Zaku Imperial Knight so they won't be too scruffy 
my you know imperial guard vehicles like my tanks and stuff they will be they'll be knackered and battered uh, i've got a, a squad of death Corps krieg so i'm gonna have you know if they get any vehicles eventually they'll be battered because they're hardcore the death Corps krieg but i think the tempesta sands i think they'll be fairly clean so they'll be dirty but they won't be scruffy uh, let's have a look and see the chat uh, it's a crap sculpt and it's not a bargain says speedy q8 it's the majority of a 95th Rifle Sergeant and it's quality sculpt from Mitch's military models. Lunchtime says Lynn. Ooh, yeah, food. Weens says Andy McLeish. Spid, the casts are amazing, says Dave. Hello, says Kieran. Hey, Kieran. Welcome, welcome. Uh, right, I'm going to do some work now. So what we're going to do, we're going to do some fabrics. So I need to put my space helmet on so I can see what I'm doing. Now I actually just winged the colours on these on these backpacks. I've got no idea what colours I actually used. So <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. So I'm just going to make this up. So I think for these bed rolls, they're a kind of kind of a reddish brown colour. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to check the focus because I think that might be out of a little bit out of focus for you. Boop -a -doop -a -doop. Let me just put that there because that's probably where it's going to end up most of the time. Arse upwards. Zip. What fox? When did you get Death Court of Krieg? Also, evening. Hey, I've had. I've had it for a while. I've just not. I've not made it yet. Hang on. Uh, let me get it. I got it ages ago. I've got some Death Court of Krieg. I've got just a squad of ten. It's got there's dust on it. I've got a squad of ten. I just wanted to get them to try them out. And if it's not too much of an absolute abortion to make them and you know clean them up, then I might get a few more Death Court of Krieg. Because <laughs> Death Court of Krieg, man, it's awesome. Who doesn't want Warhammer soldiers that look like World War One Germans wearing French greatcoats? <clears throat> there you go. It's kind of like German helmet, French greatcoat, British gas mask. Very strange. Uh, yeah, I've had them for ages. Uh, does anyone have any tips on creating the plasma effect or other things on, on things other than the plasma? Let me start all that again. Does anyone have any tips on creating the plasma effect on other things other than the plasma rifles? I'm building my Project Plasma 5D SD Banshee. Well, I can't speak. I'm building my Project Plasma SD Banshee. I'm trying to replicate the plasma effect where the Psycho frame is. Oh, right, okay. Liped object source lighting, says Zadster. No, like the plasma rifle glow effect. Um, well, I can tell you how I do my plasma rifle glow effect, but I need something to show you on, and I haven't got anything to demonstrate it on. Um, but what I will tend to do is, uh, have I got anything I can demonstrate? <sighs> okay, right. It's a bit of a rubbish thing to demonstrate on, but if I can even do, I don't even know. If, hang on, I don't even know if I've got the colours out. Uh, there's Gullum and that Soulstone blue. Have I got the colours? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Gullum and blue, a white colour. Uh, and then we've got some of that in medium. Okay, right. Here's what I do. Here's the way I do it on my plasma rifles. I don't know how it'll work on a big structure, but this is how I do it on a small structure. Um, mint uh, plasma fluid and a lot of white. Okay, what I'll do is I'll paint the thing white first. So imagine this is a plasma rifle and that's the ribbed, the ribbed bit of the plasma rifle. It's not the best thing to demonstrate on really, but it's, it's the best thing I've got. Let me put it onto something so it's not moving around. This is just helping me get out of doing any work, isn't it? Which is fine because if I can get out of doing any actual work tonight and just hang out with you guys, it's brilliant. So here we have a thing. Now imagine that I've painted this white, so it's actually I've, I've painted that colour. This may not work so great because I'm doing it without priming it or painting it, but Hey, what are you going to do? I haven't got any plasma rifles to hand, so in the 40 watt range. Um, so what I will do, and this might not work, but it's worth testing it, is you need some Lamian Medium, some Labia Mermaids, and you need some Gulliman Blue, or you can use, uh, there's another light blue colour, the Gulliman Blue is a glaze, but there's also a light blue colour, which I can't remember the name of it, it might be, um, it's a really light but bright blue and I can't remember what it's called, and I haven't got it out here, so I can't tell you. But it's a very, it's a, I think it's a regular paint, but it's a very, very light, bright blue. It's kind of, it's kind of that colour, that colour at the top of the label there. It's that kind of, I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, 
that's also a good blue to use. This will give you quite a dark uh, blue, but you can mix and match. Basically, what you want to do is get yourself uh, some Lamian medium, and you want maybe, I don't know, one. Well, I'm just going to use four blobs two, three, four, call it five. Five brushfuls. And this brush isn't 100% clean, so I shouldn't really use it, but never mind. Uh, and then what I'll do is, for, if it's Gullim and Blue, which is a glaze, I'll take maybe one brushful and I'll mix that in. Now the reason I'm using Lamian Medium here and not just water is that I don't want to, I don't want to thin the Gullim and Blue, I want to dilute it, there's a big difference. So what I'll do then is if I've got a plasma weapon, I'll just quite simply paint that on. So imagine this is the ribbed part of a plasma weapon. So I'll get that on there. I'll run it along perpendicular to the ribs so it collects in the recess. And I'll work it around so it's not completely solid. So it starts off like that. But yeah, so the difference is with thinning and diluting. If you thin something, like if you thin a paint with water, then it behaves differently and you can get watermarks and things like that. Uh, but if you dilute it with, say, a, a glaze medium like Lamian medium, then what you're doing is you're increasing the amount of carrier, which is the Lamian medium, and not increasing the amount of paint. So you're having, let's say you've got a million paint particles per centiliter of fluid. If I've got four brushes of this, let's say I've got a centiliter of this, right? Centiliter of that would be, say, say, a million paint particles per centiliter of fluid. If I then add a load of this, I might have five centiliters of fluid, but I'll still have a million paint particles. So that's what I'm doing. If I do it in water, the acrylic binders don't work the same and the paint structure breaks down. It doesn't, it doesn't act the same way. By diluting it, by just increasing the amount of carrier to the amount of pigment, it's still going to behave exactly the same way. So the surface tension will be exactly the same on, you know, on surface structured or ribbed or, or textured surfaces. Whereas with water, the acrylic binders won't behave the same way and the surface tension will be different and it won't, it, it won't pool or collect the same way. Um, so what I'm going to do, let me blast that with the hairdryer very, very quickly. Uh, talk amongst yourselves for a second. Everybody's laughing because I said ribbed. Hello. Children, honestly. This may take a moment. Okay, this isn't going to be a very practical demonstration, I'm afraid. It's actually going to take forever to do this, so I'll just, I'll tell you instead. What I would do is, so imagine that's dried now. So that's, that's that kind of effect where you, you, you're getting all the, the, basically the glaze to collect in the recess. What I would do is I'd come along then and you can either apply more, you wait till this has dried enough, you can either apply more, so let's say this is the, the weapon, I want to have a, a darker, a stronger colour bit here and here. I can apply more and fade it out, and it's not really working because this is wet, but you get the idea. And what I would do is I would continue to add more on say the bottom edges or the side or wherever I wanted it to go from dark to light. So the top, if you've got a plasma rifle, let me get a pen. Doo -doo -doo. If you've got a classic Warhammer plasma rifle where you have, you know, you've got that, the gun bit here and then you've got that section that's all kind of ribbed like that. You know what I mean, there's the gun bit and there's the handle. Terrible weapon, I know. But this is the ribbed bit you want to, you want to, it, you can't, it's weird to draw on this paper, it's really shiny. So it's this bit here, that this sort of ribbed venting section that you're trying to paint. Oh, that's rubbish, let me do that again. There, there, it's actually really hard, I mean, even on camera. Right, there's the gun bit. The handle there, trigger. It's this piece here that's kind of like that. It's usually square or round. This is the bit you're painting and what you do is you, you do have the darker bits here and you build it up so that the top is lots of white with a hint of blue in the recesses and down at the bottom the blue is darker. But what you can do, you don't just have to do multiple coats. What you could do is you could do your first coat with four brushes of Lamian Medium and one brush of Gulliman Blue. Get that on, let it dry, 
give it a blast with the hairdryer. Then you could add another brush full of Gulliman Blue to the same mix, so you're making it less dilute. You, you're doubling the amount of pigment, but you've still got the same amount of thin, car clear carrier. Then you go on and you do where you want it to be darker. And then you keep doing that. You can either add more each time, or you can just do layer on top of layer. It's basically glazing, but you're controlling, what's that? You're controlling the amount of the glaze that you're putting on and you can vary the amount of color to carry it. So that's how I do plasma. I don't know if it work on the uh, Psycho frame of an SD Unicorn. It might do. It might be something maybe you want to airbrush instead. I've not got that paint on it, never mind. Um, but that's how I do plasma rifles. So as a little aside that got me out of doing any work for five minutes. Also, if you're doing glazes like this with, uh, yeah, I know what that looks like. If you, <laughs> if you are doing glazes like this, we're using Lamian medium and uh, a pigment or a paint or a glaze. Don't do it in your wet palette. Do it on a piece of paper or tile, or this is one of the Warhammer, the Games Workshop palettes. Do it on something non-porous, um, because the point of doing this is to dilute it, not to thin it. If I do it on my wet palette, I'm adding water into the mix, and that's thinning it as well, and that changes the way it behaves. And you don't want that, you want to treat it like a glaze. I'm basically making a glaze more dilute, so it's less bright. So there you go, there you go. I hope that helped. Probably didn't, but there you go. Uh, what's chat doing? Uh, everybody's chortling because I said, I say ribbed or something, I can't remember now. Probably said all kinds of words. It reminds me I need to get some masking fluid, says Adster. Uh, uh, the Windsor and Newton masking stuff I had turned into solid rubber in the jar. It does over time. Most of them do. As soon as you open it to the air, it starts to cure even if you close it again. Team Inep says ribbed, haha. Uh, James Lorimore says her pleasure. Fnar, fnar, chortle, chortle. You can't take us anywhere, can you? Talk, chat, talk, chat. Clean and chat, chat, ha. Uh, I blame Dad, he's corrupting influence, he's warped my fragile little mind, says Gaz Vickers. He he, bottom edges, says, but I could just say hello and Paul would find it as a smutty comment. Paul will take anything as a smut. Uh, bottom, lol, says James Lorimore. Lynn Dipple, James, yes, I've been working on weekends, I've really missed y'all, she says. Aw, you've been missed too, Lynn. Are there normally two round bits at the bottom end, says Team Inept. I don't know what we're talking about now. Shut up. Ha, trigger. Ha ha, adopted son. <laughs> I don't know what's going on now. The bottom one isn't very PG-13. You're the best dad ever, dad, says James Lorimore. Uh, everybody's talking about something. Uh, oh my god, the full-scale plastic nonsense I just walked through, says Scale Model Muse. I don't, what did you, I don't know what you walked through. What did you walk through? Hey Muse, by the way. Uh, no, he's not. Vamp's not coming. He made Scott and me go to bed before 11 last night. What, together? Wow. James Lorimore says, hat, bottom, smut. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, let's do some work. Shut up. You're putting me off, aren't you? You ne'er-do-wells. Right, so, what are we doing? We're doing some nonsense, I think. We're going to do some uh, materials and fabrics, weren't we? Now, we'll be a shorter show tonight, so I won't do a lot of work. Um, we'll, do a, we'll do the wheel of giveaways and stuff as usual, but it will be a shorter show. Just because, I mean, for one reason, one reason is that I've got like, I've got Doctor Who and, and other things to watch, and I want to watch them before I go to bed, so. <laughs> go watch me Doctor Who. Uh, well, there's some other things I need to watch. Right, what are we doing? Uh, also, um, there was something else I needed to do and I can't remember. Uh, right, so I'm gonna do some fabricings. I'll just do a little bit of a layer on these bed rolls first. So I'm going to choose a colour. They came out kind of a reddy brown colour, which is not what I was looking for. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. But actually, no. Let's do the let's do the leather first. Oh, have I done the leather already? I've done the leather already. I think. I did uh, leather with steel legion drab. I did some agrax earth, agrax earth shade over it, uh, and then I was going to. What colours was I using for leather? I was using Steel Legion Drab. I was using. This is the problem not writing down the custom colours you make. You just end up screwing it up and getting it all wrong. XV88 I was using as a highlight colour. XV88. Give it a good shake. Oh, Kenneth's in. Hey, Kenneth. Is Kenneth in? Oh, yes. Dad is the best dad because he loves tracks, says Kenneth. He's got good taste, Kenneth. You're right, he does like tracks. I'm just a heathen who likes wheels. I've got hair in my wet palette. God damn it. 
No, it's an eyelash. No, it's a head hair. It's way more paint than I need, but never mind. I'm gonna put this over here. Over here, see there's one there. Doodly doodly doo. Doodly. Have you seen the new paint pot that uh, Games Workshop have come out with? It's bigger than this, and it's got like, I know you're going to laugh at it. It was all ribbed inside for my pleasure. It's all ribbed inside so you can get the paint off your brush, and it's also got these little channels so you can you can pull your brush up through the little channel and make a nice point. So I might have to invest in one of those. I don't know. <sighs> right, so let us do some layering. I've been testing out today uh a small layer brush from the games workshop i tend to use my uh not games workshop army painter brush but i thought i'd test out my games uh, i put that back in there where's the thing i thought i'd test out this uh citadel layer brush today and it's actually coming out quite well hair everywhere so we're going to try a little bit of painty painty uh, i'm going to do a little highlight color on oh that's really thin my wet palette is a bit too wet. Oh dear. A bit of leather work, I think. I'm going to put a little highlight on the leather. Now, I'm not one of the people that does edge highlighting and all that kind of nonsense. I'm not into edge highlight highlighting at all, except on some leather, because it can look quite good on leather pouches and things. So I'm going to keep it subtle. Uh, but like, for example, in the... You want, I don't know if you'll see on camera, but the straps on here, little straps, I'll put a little bit of a highlight of the XV88 there. Just on the top where it would catch the light. It's almost invisible. Like the dreaded, there's a big shadow right there when I'm painting. Where's that shadow come from? Why have I got a shadow right there? That's really annoying. Hmm. It's not good for you guys because it's right where you need to be seeing what I'm doing. I've clearly got the camera and the lights in just the wrong place. That's really frustrating, actually. Let's put this light on. Whoa. Is that better? Is that light a bit better for you? Oh, it's a bit better. Uh, a little bit of XV88 on there. So I'm just really picking out little details. I'm not. I'm not really doing edge highlighting per se. I don't mind. I do like the some of the edge highlighting effects. It's just for me, it's a bit too comic book. It's a bit too cartoony. If I was painting like um, that steampunk looking guy from the new Black Death Tower, whatever it's called, I might do that with the edge highlighting style because that's kind of cartoony anyway. Oops, that's kind of cartoon looks. So that would quite suit it. And leather it's not so bad, but yeah, for everything else though, I don't really do edge highlighting stuff. I think I've already done these scabbards, rifle scabbards. Yes, I think I did. A little bit there. Just a touch. Hopefully you can see all this. Just a tiny amount. Yes, I've been trying out this um, small layer brush. And it's actually quite good for edge highlighting, strangely enough. Strangely enough. Uh, uh, there's some got a, leather straps. I like the fact that the bonnet is held down by leather straps. That's quite cool. But I don't need to paint those. Um, that's that bit. Not a lot to do there. Leather strappage on the... That's been done already, I think. Yeah, I think I've already done that. I've lost track now of what I've painted and what I've not. I think I've actually done all the leather, to be honest. I think it's the fabrics. I need to just buckle on with that and crack on with that. Uh, Frankie goes to Hubbard. Hi, folks. You're doing a cool paint job. Thank you very much, Frankie. Welcome. Uh, wait, Earl D is Duncan. Aviad, my real name is Duncan. I forgot Dennis for a second. <laughs> uh, you may never know. Yup, but not that Duncan always wanted my second name to be McLeod. Duncan McLeod. Uh, good evening all. Uh, Earl D. Duncan Jones the Chef. Not Duncan Jones the Chef. 
Dad, I got a question about paints. I had to put my paints in a room and I think there's a hole somewhere. Is that why my paints are all wonky? Says James Lauren Moore. He's too wet. Is that why my paints are all wonky? I don't understand. Oh, Reese is in. RJC Models Official. Hey, Reese. Fox is shedding. Yes. I've got tons of paint bottles in my pocket. Says Scale Model Muse. Uh... I've had Manassas Fox, for the record, you don't paint the interior fabric for tabletop standard. You don't paint the interior fabric for tabletop standard. The interior fabric, what? I don't understand. Can you explain that? I don't get what you mean. You don't paint the interior fabric. I don't know what you mean, dude. Do you mean I'm overpainting? Do you mean I'm overpainting here? Am I going a bit too far? Uh, do 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 What's happening? Colin there gets in. He's playing Destiny 2. Hi, Lynn, Mike, Dave. The seats. Oh, the seats inside. I. I that's, the reason I've not glued the roof on is so that when I'm playing, I can say, Hey, look. Look at my interior. Isn't it awesome? Yes. Yes. I can't not paint the interior. It's, I've got to do it. I, I, I did a fully painted interior on my Space Wolf Storm Wolf and then realised you can't see inside it. And that made me sad. So I decided I was going to do a proper interior and I'm going to paint the crap. Because I've got to paint the dudes. You've got two dudes that live in here as well. And the thing is, if you put the dudes in, if you get the dudes on, once you've put the dudes in there, there's a, there's a drivey dude that sits down there. But once you've got him on there, and this goes on top, and then that goes on top of him. You're only ever going to see his head. Which is just ass. So I've, I've got to make it removable so I can at least show off my awesome interior painting skills. But yes, if I was just painting it just to play on the tabletop. I think is my army. I'm, I'm trying to paint it. I can't paint tabletop standard without going a bit too far. It would be a waste, a waste of model if you didn't paint it. Yeah, I, I know. I've just got a bit too carried away. I'm going to change the colouring because everything's got a bit blown out when I made those quick changes. So let me just uh, change the brightness a bit. There we go, it's better. Right. Uh, I was going to do a thing, and the thing I was going to do was the thing with the. Th uh, I've got to find a light fabrical colour. Let's go for Zandri. That's a base colour. I don't want a base colour. Let's go for... Oh, character stone's a bit too dark. Hmm. Let's go for... Let's just do a thing. I'm going to take some... Uh, I'm going to take some... Some Karak stone... I'm going to mix in some of the XV88. And here you see the advantage of the wet palette. So it's just redded up a little bit, the Karak stone, so it's not quite so bland. Okay, so that's that. Little bit of mixing going on. Okay, so Scale Model Muse. Okay, people, time to drive. Stay tuned for show picks and such. Okay, Muse, thanks for coming in. Uh, then why have all that detail inside if you didn't paint it, uh, says Lynn Dipple. It's actually designed so you can actually build it as just that bit with the back open. Although they don't tell you that in the instructions. So. Uh, and some people like to have it magnetised so you can swap things out. So yeah, there are people that like that kind of stuff. Uh, right, so. It's only like having the interior on a, mo on a model tank, I suppose. It's got this bit done, so a little bit of the waters, waters of life. Keep it nice and thin. And then, we'll just get a little bit of layery, layery going on. Hopefully you guys can see all this. Mm -hmm, it's a bit too thin. So what I do, let's get that off. Let's get it off. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm just going to go over this bed rolls and my aim is to do it on camera. My aim is to keep the darker areas. So the, it was painted with, um, I think it was Zandri dust and then some washes of Agrax earth shade and Reichland flesh shade. Just to make it look different from the leather. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the raised areas but leave the darker base colour in the recesses and that will be a, 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 a sort of variation between the bits that are shaded quite darkly with the Agrax earth shade that are recesses anyway and bits that are just a bit darker but a slightly different tone because they've not got quite as much earth shade on there. So like recesses and the, the depths of creases and folds. So I'm just, now this is kind of like edge highlighting in a way, you're just doing it in a big area. So it's still slightly cartoony. But the whole point about painting these things is, for me, I could do them horribly realistically. There's nothing stopping you painting these things super realistic, nothing at all. But I need to kind of come up with a good half and half sort of realistic and not realistic for myself because otherwise it'll take me like a lifetime to paint my entire army. Yeah. Uh, then I want to get the edges of these bits on the bed rolls. Yes, this is kind of edge highlighting on there after everything I just said. Now when Duncan's paints these on the Warhammer TV and he shows you how to paint these guys he has no trouble at all using the edge of his brush to paint the, the rolls of the bed roll yet yeah, it's not that well pronounced. Or lies. Although I did notice, I'll tell you what I did notice the other day uh, one of his how to paint videos was how to paint Death Cora Krieg uniform. And it was one of those like quick sort of two three minute ones where it's like hey Duncan, somebody's written in and asked how to paint it. And I was like, but that's a Forge World kit. That's not right. Surely you can't be showing people how to paint Forge World stuff. But it seems that they did. Which was kind of weird. It didn't quite go very well. <laughs> this one's not coming out quite as a hair on the end of my... Get off. That's why I was struggling. There's a big doddy hair on the end of my brush. From somewhere. This is a while, it's, it's horribly overexposed. I do apologise, folks. Hang on. Hang on. Wow, that was terrible. Whew. That really was. What's going on there? There we go. Still not perfect, but it's because I've got this light on here that's right above the camera, just so you can see what I'm doing, because for some reason it was really, it was really dark. Uh, okay, what are we doing? Doing this bed roll. Painting bed rolls always makes me think of sushi. And then I get hungry. If you've not yet made yourself a wet palette, by the way, you really need to. Because like I did earlier on, though, when I just mix this colour, the beauty of the wet palette is that that colour will stay paintable and usable for hours. If you mix a special colour and you just do it on a normal dry palette like on a piece of paper or card or plastic or a plate or something like that, whatever you use for a palette, a dry palette, you mix a special colour, it's acrylic, it'll dry out really fast. So good luck ever, ever mixing that colour again. You're going to find it a bit of a challenge. 
whereas this will stay workable for ages. As long as the palette is moist. It's workable. Right, so that's not bad. It's taken those taken those bed rolls from a kind of ready brown colour to more of a khaki, which is spot on. Do, 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 do. There we go. Let's go and once again with a bit more just to cover up any little patchy areas because it was quite thin, so it was a bit patchy in places, but that's fine because it helps cover things up. So, there we go, there's some bed rolls done. Do, 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 do. Fox, did you say bed roll or bread roll? Says Reese. Bread roll. Mm, yes, it's hot dogs. Military hot dogs in the back of trucks. Uh, have you had Madar? He actually did the how to work with resin kits for Forge World. Yes, he did as well. He did a how to build resin um, kits, which, which again was a bit weird because they don't do Forge World stuff. Normally, there's no real crossover between Forge World and Games Workshop. They're kind of almost two different entities. So it was kind of weird to see him do that. Now the challenge here is I want to do the same thing again, but this is a piece of fabric under there. It's going to look absolute pants if I try and get clever with it. So let's find a decent green. I think I did it with... I think it was Death World Forest that I did as a base colour. So I shall go over it again with the Death World Forest. Doodle -doo 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 -doo. Why is it whenever I use black or white paint it glues up my airbrush but when I use other paints it works perfectly? Um, white paint has, or some white paints, white pigment, I think, I could be wrong, could be wrong, but with white paints it's to do with the actual pigment. I think whether it actually includes chalk or chalky substances, the nature of white paints is such that it has a very chalky pigment in there that dries up really quick. Uh, black, I don't know. Black, black's usually quite good. Uh, but yes, with other colours it's not that case, but with, with white, it's the nature of the pigment itself that creates white paint that leads to it drying out and getting tip dry quite a lot. You're not the only person. White is the worst colour in the world to paint with uh, in, any, in any way or shape or form. However you paint your white brush or anything, it's always horrible to paint with. Now this isn't going to be as good to paint because this is something I made out of uh, bog roll. So it's not got that sort of proper tarpaulin look. What I'm trying to say is the creasing on this isn't quite as convincing as say on a plastic bit of bed rollery or similar so I can make the effort on this one but it's not going to look anywhere near as realistic doodle 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 doodle. oh it might do, I don't know, I just don't think it will it might look a bit artificial Although I'm going to cover it in like dirt and dust. So it doesn't matter if it looks a bit OTT I suppose. Oops, if I could stop dropping it that'd be good. Yes, if it looks a bit pants that's not so bad because I will be covering it in dirt and dust. Doodle -doo 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 -doo. Anyway, nobody's told me what they got from uh, Telford. Nobody's actually fessed up and said what they bought yet. So come on, out with it. What did you buy? Or did you all put that and I totally missed the comments? I'm pretty sure nobody said outright what they bought. Do, 
Okay, so that's a bit gash, really. That's a wee bit. That looks a bit gash, but it looks a bit gash because I've not done a very good job of creating creases when I made it, or not a very convincing job of creating creases. Because if there's one thing I'm not, that's any kind of sculptor. I tried. I tried to make it squish convincingly, but yeah, I've not, I've not got those chops clearly. I'm not cut out for that kind of work. But it's going to get covered in dirt and dust, so it's not the end of the world. Uh, doodle 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 doodle. It's quite a distance. It's quite a. Hmm. It's quite a stark contrast between the green and the dark green. However, there is something I can do about that. Hair dryer time, one second. <laughs> Uh, what we can do is we can do a thing and the thing we can do is go into this box that you can't see and get out the one shade that I forgot to get out. Uh, we need, what do we want, do we want, we want, I think we'll have Biltan Green, I think. What's that one? Yeah, Biltan Green. Now, Biltan Green is a shade. And you might be wondering why I'm going to use a shade. Uh, and, but I'm not actually going to shade it. Doodly 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 doodly. Uh, I've had molasses. One thing I found to really help with fabric is to stipple the paint instead of regular brush strokes. It creates a nice texture that sells the effect. It's actually already got a texture because it's toilet roll. <laughs> covered in white glue, so it's actually got a texture to it, which kind of kills it a little bit. Uh, yes, I'm going to leave some Biltan Green. And what I'm actually going to do is, if I can get myself organised, get my shoot together. Oh, God. I'm all over the shop tonight. Right. We are going to put the palette to one side. You go there, palette. I'm going to make a glaze again. Uh, so we will need to clean off that brush. Now, whenever you're mixing Lamy and Medium, which that is not, whenever you're mixing Lamy and Medium with anything, get your Lamy and Medium out first. So I want one. Two, two brushfuls. I don't want a thin glaze, I just want a glaze. What I want to do is take a shade which is designed to settle in the recesses and I want to thin it a bit, but not massively. And uh, not thin it, sorry, dilute it, but not massively. Uh, just enough that it can act more like a glaze than a shade. So it'll still, it'll still flow the same way but I don't want to use that brush that's a that's my mixing brush it'll still flow the same way but hopefully if I can find a brush hopefully it will act more like a glaze and tint this thing because what I want to do is in fact I'm going to put some more lamy medium in there more just a little bit more what I want to do is tint this and use this glaze to make all the greens in the top hall in kind of blend together a bit so it's not so dark and light but there's a common tint now it may come out terrible or it may work but what you can often do is if you ever got like if you ever painted something and let's say you painted some space marine armor and you've got like whatever colors you've used you've got a highlight you've got a base color and you've got the shaded areas and then you've got a highlight 
if ever you find that your highlight is a bit too bright and cartoony and stands out a bit too much from the base colours just apply a glaze now a glaze can like I say can either be you've thinned down a colour a paint or a shade with limey medium or it could be one of the pre-made glazes that that um, that Games Workshop do like the Gulliman's Blue they do have a green one but I just don't I can't have any here so let me give that a quick blast of the hairdryer do -ba -do 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 -do. One more coaty coat, I think. It just helps blend your highlights and your base colours together a bit better. Stops your highlights from being quite so bright and bold compared to your dark areas and vice versa. Doesn't always work. This isn't coming out brilliantly. But again, I'm not too fussed on this anyway because I'm going to cover this up with dirt and dust anyway. So it's not the end of the world. So there you go. Looks a little bit better. I mean, it's still not realistically, but it's the creases that, to me, to my eyes, don't work. The actual shape of the creases, because I, I did it by hand. So we'll put that to one side, and we'll try not to look at it and get sad. So we'll put that over there. Uh, what time are we on? Nine o'clock. Okay. Let's see what the chat's doing. Uh, so, Fox, going on the comments earlier, accepting the primer using only the paint choices supplied as they're supplied for the Conquest mag. Yes, for my Warhammer Conquest stuff, what I'm doing is for 95% of the figures and vehicles and stuff, I'm going to use, I'm going to follow the paints that they sent. I might not necessarily always follow the steps in the magazine. I might do some things a little bit differently, but I'm only going to use the paints they've sent, which is why... I'm getting confused now that they get you to paint a few spots on some of the pox walkers flesh colour or with the excuse me Bugman's glow when it should all be Bugman's glow because they're all flesh coloured but I don't know what they're doing there so I'm sure we'll find out but there will be a few figures that I will put to one side like um, uh, Lieutenant Calcius or Lieutenant Calcium as I keep calling him I'm going to put him to one side and do a proper paint job on him using using all the colours I've got uh, doing proper like you know glazes and stuff and using all kinds of colours that they haven't provided yet and that will be a little standalone episodes, like an advanced technique kind of episodes. Because most of it's going to be just using the stuff they've sent so that people who've got the same magazines can do what I'm doing. But not necessarily follow the magazine step by step, but they can they can copy me and do what I'm doing. But I will do the advanced technique ones. And it might not just be Lieutenant Calcium, it might be, you know, some of the vehicles. I might do the, um, the repulsor tank properly as well, because I quite like the look of that repulsor tank. Um... So yeah, they'll be more advanced and properly done so that for people who aren't, because I'm filming it for absolute beginners, but for those who aren't absolute beginners, they've got something in it as well. Uh, if you've not seen that series, I've only got a couple of episodes up so far and I'm still working on episode issues one to six. Uh, but go and check it out. It's There's a playlist on my channel. The only thing I'm realising is, once I've painted a few figures, each episode is going to be exactly the same steps, really. I'm, I'm not sure how you're going to get lots of episodes of like ish, ep, episode seven. We're going to paint some more dudes that we've just received in all the ways we've painted them all so far. So, yeah, it might be a bit repetitive. But hey, yes, yeah, so I'm not sure what we're going to do with the poxwalk. And it's difficult because I know how I want to paint the poxwalkers, but I can't. Like you've got to paint all their clothing blue. Well, I don't want to paint them blue. Some of them should have orange pants and grey pants and red pants. But I'm sure they'll change it later on. Uh, let's have a look. Thank you, Fox, for the help with the plasma effect. I'm sorry, I'm just getting back to you. I'm at work and duty calls where I had to go back and watch it. Lol, but I have a go now due to more working. There are other ways to do it. That's kind of the other way around that I, most people do it. What a lot of people do is paint it blue and then they'll do the same technique but using a glaze of white rather than a glaze of blue. And they'll build it up the other way so that the recesses are white. The reason I don't do that is because if you do it that way, the recesses are white but the highlight areas are blue, which to me doesn't really work. It should be the highlights are white. So yeah, it, you can do it either way around using the glaze of either the white or the blue. I don't know how it works on your psychophrate. It may not work on big flat surfaces. What, on a big flat surface, what you'd have to do 
is you know just build up with very thin glaze i was painting that you'd build up with the, the color you want fading around the edges and just it's hard to explain the glaze so you paint all this area say i, I wanted to make this square uh like a blue glow what i would do is i, I would personally paint it white then I would use a glaze of the blue, very light blue, very, very thin glaze, like six lamyard medium to one blue. Do the whole thing. Then I'd do the same again, another layer once that's dried of the blue, but I'd miss out a bit in the middle. And I'd do another layer again and I'd get nearer, I'd do less. Each to each coat I did of the glaze, I would paint, I would, if I get my words out, each layer of the glaze, I would paint less and less in the middle and more and more towards the edge. So the blue builds up around the edge, but fades away in the middle. Alternatively, you could paint the whole thing blue and just do a glaze of white and then get smaller and smaller with each layer. And as you add more and more layers, the, gla the whole point of a glaze is that the more layers you add, the thicker that paint gets and the more tr less transparent it gets. So one glaze coat over there, over blue, if I painted it white, would just look almost invisible. Then do more of it, but make a smaller, smaller area, and you end, end up eventually with it fading from blue in the outside, and fading into white in the middle. Because as you paint it, you get smaller and smaller, and that layer of paint gets thicker and thicker. So, depends how you want to do it. I do do some practicing first. It depends. It doesn't work in every situation. That was really badly explained. I'm not getting my words out at all tonight, and I do. I do apologise. Uh, I spent says gross models. Yes, I bet you did. Uh, one thing I found to really help with... Oh, I've done that one already. I got absolutely nothing at Telford. Plane ticket was way too much, says Lynn. <laughs> I bet. Um, let's have a look. James Lorimer, I just need to do better at painting. You know the golden rules, James. Two thin coats. Thin your paints. Make yourself a wet palette. And use water-based acrylics if you used a wet palette. Uh, if you skimp out on any of those steps then you, you, your mileage will vary. If you, if you don't use a wet palette, you probably still paint fine, but you'll find a wet palette makes your life easier. If you don't thin your paints, your paint job will look like garbage, because if you get paint straight from the pot and slap it on dead thick, it'll look like garbage. There's a video, Duncan did a video on Warhammer TV comparing thinned paint to paint straight from the pot on a model. He got Mephiston Red and he painted half of it with paint straight from the pot and half of it with thinning the paint on his palette. You can see the difference. This side is an abortion, that side was beautiful. So thin your paints, two thin coats and use a wet palette. Uh, the way to look at painting is I do the best you can do so at that time, then be happy for a bit, then do another paint job and try to beat the last one. At the end of the day, every time you do a paint job, you'll always have something something you don't like about it. Um, just accept the fact that the next thing you do will be better and the thing after that will be better. And as you go forward in time, you'll only get better and better. Don't forget, you know, I've been doing this for 30 years. Um, you know, you look at people who do top-notch paint jobs, they've been doing it for years and years and years. And it just takes, it doesn't take everybody a long time. Some people can pick it up straight away. Some people take a bit longer. It's just practice, 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 practice. You know, I couldn't do open heart surgery right now if you put me in the, if you put me in the, the operating theatre and you know, scrub me up, gave me the gowns and the tools, I'd be like, this person's gonna die, I know what I'm doing. But if I got the training and the practice, I could do open heart surgery. So think of it that way. It's not something you're necessarily gonna go, there's a brush, there's some paint, beautiful. It doesn't happen that way. It takes time, it takes practice, and it's not so much copying exactly what other people do. It's taking advice from other people who say, do this, that, and the other, trying that, and you'll either find it works perfectly for you or you'll adapt that method some other way that works better for you and you'll just get good results. It's it's one of those things, it's, don't, whenever you're making a model, don't get fixed on that model being the best looking thing in the world. Like, you know, let's say I'm making a model, I'm, I'm building this model now, uh, and I'm thinking to myself, it needs to look fantastic. It's got to be brilliant. I can't accept anything less than perfection. Every time I do something wrong, I'm going to be like, oh God, look at the brush strokes there and that bit's not quite straight. And this, I'd, I'd, I'd just throw it away. Always accept that whatever you're working on is not going to be perfect. And that anything that does go wrong, at least you'll know next time on the next model. Because a lot of people tend to build each model and think it's the only model in the universe and they have to get it right. It's not. It's, it's, a, 20, it's a 40 quid piece of plastic. If I screw it up, I'll just get another 40 quid piece of plastic and work on that and try try fixing the mistakes on that next one. 
what you're working on now, do your best to get it right, but don't lose heart if anything goes wrong. Because if it does go wrong, fine, it becomes a test pig and you move on to the next kit. Ten years from now, you'll have loads of kits on your belt and you won't even care about those early ones. So there you go. And the other thing, of course, is when you do it long enough, what you do is you put all your effort into painting something and then you finish it, you put it on your shelf and you never think about it again and eventually you just give it away or sell it or throw it away. Oh, enormous coffee. Um, so don't get too hung up in that every single model you build has to be an absolute work of art. A lot of them won't be. There's a lot of mistakes to be made before you can do the good stuff. Uh, but that doesn't mean the mistakes aren't bad. And a lot of the stuff you think now is awesome, trust me, you, you, even if you sat there and thought, I've done a brilliant paint job, it's the best thing ever. Five years from now, you'll come back and you'll go, Jesus, that's crap. Because your skills will improve, you'll get better, and your standards will change, and you'll, you'll grow and develop. So don't, don't get too hung up. And don't compare yourself to other people. Don't look at Joe Schmo painting his model beautifully and think, I can't do that, I'm getting depressed now. That's the worst, with any creative endeavour, the worst thing you can do is compare yourself to somebody else who's been doing it for 30 years. Don't. Look to other people for inspiration. Just accept you're not going to be, you know, a good, you're not going to be as good as somebody who's been doing it for 30, 40 years. It's not going to happen. It's not physically possible. 30 years time, you'll be as good as somebody who's been doing it for 30 years. Because they've been doing it for 30 years. So don't expect to be, you know, a master at straight out of the box. It's not how it works. Accept that you're going to learn. As um, Kirioth TV on one of his videos, if you don't watch, if you never watched him, Kirioth's a really nice guy. I'd love to meet him one day. Um, he did a video and he said, basically, the harsh truth is, and this is about a minute, he says, the first time you paint a Warhammer model kit, it'll be shit. He says, I'll tell you now, the first thing you paint will be shit. It will be utter shit. It will be the, the shittest thing ever with shit on top. But don't let that put you off. And it's true, what he said is true. The first thing you ever paint is just garbage. It will be. And you'll look back on it in 10 years and be like, oh, hell, did I really paint that? When I first got back into model making, I made the Ravel 170 second scale three foot U-boat. And I thought it was brilliant. I was like, wow, I'm red proud of this. I'm really proud. I put it on my shelf. I'm like, yeah, it's brilliant. Two years later, I made another one, exactly the same model, for a commission. That's when he paid me. So I was like, oh, I'll have to make this model again. So I made it again, and I painted it using all the... And I hadn't looked at the other one for a couple of years. Painted it using all the techniques I'd learned in the last two... In the previous two years. Lots of things I didn't know about. Because when I built my own U-Bet, I was just getting back into the hobby. Made this second U-Bet using all the techniques and, and things that I'd learned, including gunk washes and weathering techniques and all kinds of stuff. And then when I put them together, the one I made two years before and the one I'd just finished for this guy's commission, the one I made for the guy's commission was fantastic. The one I made for myself was a steaming pile of shit. It was, it was rubbish. It had, it had cotton thread for the, for the antenna cables, which was just crap and gone all fuzzy and looked it was tied on with big knots the the more recent one had easy line it had really really crap weathering it had like black washes and the worst chipping in the world and it looked like complete arse whereas the one i've done for the commission had um oil paint weathering it had a gunk wash it had streaking it had proper chipping it had rust streaking it had all kinds of things discolorations all kinds of things and that's just in the course of two years so like Kirioth, T, uh, Kirioth says on his YouTube channel, the first thing you make will be shit. Expect it to be shit. And the first few things you make will probably come out shit. Don't panic. That's how it works. Everybody goes through that. You'll always start out at a certain level of ability because you haven't learned all the stuff yet. Just, just crack on. Do what you need to do. Don't expect the first few things you do to be masterpieces. They won't be. Don't, But don't get, let that put you off. Just learn. Use them to learn. And at the end of the day, if it all goes horribly tits up, you can always dunk it in some Dettol, strip the paint off, and start again. So there you go. Uh, James Lorimer says, Thanks, Model Making Guru. I'm really proud of my progress. You have come far, actually. Uh, that's the thing that amazes me. So many of you guys, who I've known for only a few years, have come so far. Like, you know, Kenneth, who we joke with in the chat yeah, about his tracks. You know, he's going to be doing this a couple of years, and he's better than all of us now. He can paint figures better than anybody I know. The guy's just got a natural talent. He's been it for a few years. Um, so there's so many of you guys that 
you've you know when you first started following me you said oh i'm just starting out i'm just starting i've just started making models and i'm mean, finding your videos really helpful and now you're doing stuff better than me and i hate you all because you, <laughs> you put me out of a job but i'm really proud of all the people that have come to me and said when i when i started a couple of years ago i watched your stuff because i was just starting out and now i'm making this and i'm like wow so yeah uh, Gaz Vickers says, now, now, model making guru, that's the wrong attitude to open heart surgery. It's like, okay, then I'll have a bash. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> yeah, well, hey. Uh, right, let's have a look at the comments while I was waffling around. Uh, hee hee, one to six, what a surprise, says Paul at Team Inep. Shut up. I've got seven to ten and a pile behind me. They're going to get done. And, uh, keep it up, then compare the first ones you did to something you've done, say, six months down the line, says LD. James Lorimer says, I've done two paint jobs and two different kits. I feel like I'm improving. However, I feel like any mistakes made are the same ones. You need to recognise them and move on. Uh, you also need somebody to be honest with you. And when you do something for turn around and say, it looks really good. Apart from that bit, it's terrible. You need to thin your paints or you need to do this or you need to do that. Um, just there's so, the, 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 the so many people that I've, I've sort of given... Not taught, but I give an advice to. And it's quite frustrating when somebody says, Fox, Fox, how do I do X? And I'll say, here's exactly how you do X. This is what you need to do. And then they go away and they come back and say, Rap, what's this? here's this next model. And I'm like, you didn't do anything that I suggested, did you? And they go, no. Um, there's one, I won't mention names, but there was somebody who showed me a model they painted. And they're like, what advice have you got? And I was like, seriously, thin your paint because that's, an abortion i didn't say it like that but it was it was a terrible paint job it was brush mark it was stodgy it was lumpy it was horrible i said seriously thin your paint just thin your paint brush more carefully thin your paint and 95 of the percent of the problems will go away about a month later they came back with another model they showed me it and i'm like you didn't thin your paint did you because this looks just as bad as the first one this has got the same problems in the end it got through to them and they started doing some really good stuff but it took a couple of goes so you know, it's something we all do. We all go, oh, that didn't work out, but I'll do exactly the same next time. It's a, a state of mind, just keep doing the same thing over and over, and eventually it'll work. It doesn't always work. But the, the, the advice that Duncan gives, which is a meme in itself, is the best advice. Thin your paints, two thin coats. Sometimes three, sometimes one. But thin your paints is the most important thing. Make a wet palette. Done. 95% of your problems are solved. Uh, but it, it takes time. Like I say, I've been doing this for 30 years. You know, people that, you know, in the chat who, who do stuff, they've been doing it for decades or for many, many years. So don't lose heart. If you know, you're a young, you're a young lad. You've only been doing it for a while. You'll get there. Just take time. Um, I painted tall geese with nail polish. Not my finest moments, says James. Yes. Yes. I was desperately trying to find, when you showed me that, I was desperately trying to find a way to be really nice and supportive, but at the same time say, what the hell have you just done? <laughs> yeah, don't do, don't do the nail polish again. Don't do that again. <laughs> uh, the second paint job does look better, I will admit. And I used a couple extra colours and stuff, kind of getting a little creative and confident, but not trying to fly too close to the sun. Just take your time. Uh, I mean, if it if it helps as well, because I know I know often I know for you I know for you personally, James, that you know money's not always the best of things. Not like you can afford to buy all these kits anyway, um, so it might be worth just getting stuff to practice on. You know, get onto eBay and buy um buy a, uh, some Warhammer kit, not that, that's already been made and painted by someone, like some figures or some vehicles that somebody's already made and painted, but that looks like a complete fetid abortion. And is going for like five dollars because all you need to do is get the thing from them they'll have built it and painted it and made a complete arse of it dunk it in some purple power or some detol if you can get you're in america so you can have some purple power let all the paint come off you've got a model you can paint with and you've spent a few dollars on it you've not gone out and bought it and had to make the kit so doesn't matter what it is but then it's a good test pig you've got you've got a cheap piece of plastic that somebody's built that you can practice your techniques on just so and it, especially if you're doing like you know miniatures like warhammer and stuff like that a lot of you say that, you know, it's dead expensive to do Warhammer figures and stuff. And it is. It's not cheap if you wanted to build an army up. But don't be afraid to go onto eBay and buy someone else's really shitty Warhammer figures they've painted. Because you'll get you'll get some guy who's got some Space Marines or some, you know, Imperial Guard or he's got some Tyranids or something. And he's painted them like, like he was painting with his butt. Like he stuck a paintbrush up his ass and he brushed it that way and he wasn't looking and it looks terrible and he's selling them for like two pound fifty. 
brilliant. You've just bought a £25 pack of 10 Space Marines for £2.50. Get it in some Dettol, the paint will come off, you can paint it from scratch. There you go, you see, if you're just starting out, you can learn that way. Uh, Team in episode used to see some of the stuff that was entered into the competitions at Telford. Believe me, progress is eminently achievable. That amazes me at Telford. Some of the stuff in the competition tables is often terrible. Uh, James, what I've built five, built three, painted. Uh, screw up at surgery, just throw it in some simple green and give it another go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. James Lomas says I'm really proud I've done that one already. Uh, Reese, uh, uh, let's have a look. How do you strip nail polish off a Gundam kip? Uh, Team Inep says not with acetone. Don't use acetone. Don't use isopropyl alcohol. Don't use paint thinners. Don't use any kind of thinners on Gumpler ever, 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 ever. If you use acetone, paint thinner, isopropyl alcohol, anything like that, you'll just have melted plastic. The only thing you can clean pl that plastic with is something like purple power. You're in the US, purple power. Maybe simple green, but I would test on sprue first or parts you don't need. Maybe simple green or purple power, something like that. Oven cleaners, don't use alcohols, don't use solvents, don't use thinners. Otherwise, you'll have no plastic left. Uh, Fox says, Reese, I feel the same. I've been making model for 20 years. And when I picked up my space puppies, I was like, what's in this? What is this? But I'm in enjoying it and learning a lot from it. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I only got into this because I wanted to break away from doing gumpler airbrushing all the time. And this was like, you know, brush painting. And I'm having so much fun. If, if I could stop doing Gumpler now and just do Warhammer and brush painty stuff, I would. I can't, but I'd love to. Because it's like, it's almost like airbrush painting now and doing proper grown up Gumpler and stuff. It's like, it's like almost like work, whereas this is kind of play. You know, doing, this is play. This is just fun play times. Right, we'll do a bit more, a bit more chat and then I need to get on with the what's in, with the what's in store. No, wrong stream. Not what's in store. The wheel of giveaways. Uh, let's have a look. Cellulose thinners are a big no-no. It will eat the plastic. Right? Yeah, any thinners is a no-no for Bandai plastic. If you've got a Bandai kit, a Gumpler, whatever it is, do not use any kind of thinners. If you want to take the paint off, it's got to be oven cleaner. In the UK, you can use Dettol, I think. Try it, test it first. I've used... I'm in the UK. I've used oven pride, oven cleaner. That's not damaged the plastic. You might be able to use Dettol, but I've not tried that yet, so there you go. Don't use solvents and thinners. That's why you can't use, you know, you can't use washes made of paint thinned with, al with alcohol or solvents. I don't use, like, Tamiya smoke thinned down on a gumpler because it will just eat the plastic joints. Uh, Team Inept. Oh, Dad, remember that massive turd paint job on that Warhammer kit you tried to buy on eBay? Oh yeah, says Dad. Dad was going to buy it. it. was a a flyer. It was a Space Marines flyer of some sort, and it was just the worst paint job you can imagine. They painted it in like house paint, and it was like oh, God. it was like somebody got a model this size and got a, a paintbrush that big and gone Aah! and tried painting it with like house paint. It was just a complete abortion. And I was like, you should buy that. Just get the paint off it. You've just bought like a Thunderhawk, whatever it was, not Thunderhawk some kind of flyer that costs like 45 quid for like 10 quid and you can paint it fox how many times can you strip paint without damaging the base plastic says george gabriel um if it's not a bandai kit as often as you want as often as you want as long as you're not using you know strong salt I mean, any plastic will dissolve with really strong solvents like cellulose thinners that will just eat plastic alive but if you're using simple green or purple power or because i know you're in the u.s as well um if you're in the u.s I don't know if you can, but if you can find Dettol, it's a UK product, it's a brown cleaning product called Dettol. Just try and find it in the in the expat stores, it's brilliant. Um, but stuff like this, as often as you want, I think. Uh, brake fluid, says Angus Hallett. Uh, you can use brake fluid, don't use brake fluid on Gumpler. Again, it will destroy the plastic. Um, the reason not to use brake fluid is it's horribly toxic and in the UK it's illegal to pour it down the drain. You have to take it to a proper disposal site to get rid of it. So there's no point using brake fluid which will kill you uh, and you can't pour it down the drain when you can just use Dettol. If you're in the UK, Dettol. Dettol will take paint off anything. Dettol will remove any kind of paint, lacquers, enamels, anything. It's great. And you can buy it from the corner shop for like £2.50. 
<sighs> Although it's your what's in store tomorrow, says Chris. Oh, fudge. Mr. Loth model, make an evening, Vincent. Uh, for the Americans, wouldn't 70% rubbing alcohol be easier to find than Dettol? Yes, but it will eat your gumplet and Bandai plastic alive. Again, it's a solvent. Alcohols and solvents, you can't use them on Bandai plastic. Bandai plastic is polystyrene, but it's not baked. This is polystyrene. You could dunk this in isopropyl alcohol. It would probably be all right. It probably would, eventually would fall apart, but might be all right if you put a piece of bandai if this was bandai kit you put it in isopropyl alcohol or any kind of stripper or paint thinner even you know tamiya x28 thinners you'd have mush or when you built it everything would shatter so bandai plastic the one downside of bandai is they have the most stupidest plastic that you can't use thinners or solvents on anywhere and when you do you've got to be really 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 careful uh, Speedy Curate says you can get a Dettol in Walmart in the Walmart expat section in the US. Uh, brake fluid works great on Gumpler for me, but use it at your own risk, says Toaster Walnut. Welcome, Toaster Walnut. Not seen you before. And yeah, it does work. It's a brilliant paint stripper. It's just so horribly toxic. And it's, as I say, if you're in the UK, you can't. it's illegal to pour it down the drain. You're not allowed to pour it away down the drain. It's like the same reason you can't pour engine oil down the drain. I mean, probably people do, but if you do... It's illegal. You're, you're polluting. So the only way to get rid of it is to take it to a designated site. And I wouldn't even know where you would get rid of brake fluid. Uh, Dettol has IPA as an ingredient, so that could be problematic, says Beyond Hope. Yeah, that might be a problem for you, for your gumplers. I say, I have used um, oven pride oven cleaner. I don't know what an American equivalent would be. I know some people have used simple green and purple power, but again, they probably got alcohol in them as well, so I don't know. So basically, my advice would be don't screw up your gumpler. Or if you do, don't screw up your expensive gumpler. Uh, we can't either in the US, says Toasted Walnut. Ah. Yeah, I mean, if you can find a simple household product that is cheap and you can pour it down the drain when you finish that can strip paint and not damage your plastic, you use that. But like I say, it's just for Bandai, you've got to be careful. Stuff like this, yeah, doesn't doesn't matter. Yeah, I'd put, I put this in Dettol. I've put, um, I've stripped paint off Warhammer figures with Dettol, no problem. So IPA might be all right with baked polystyrene. You never know. Um, Colin from Fest 67 Workshop is in. Hey, welcome, dude. Actually, were you in earlier, Colin? You just come in. I hadn't noticed you before. Uh, Spitty Curate says, It strips anything but is carcinogenic. Well-ventilated area gloves, goggles, and safe waste disposal needed. Save it for extremes of the braking system. Yeah, that's the downside of braking fluid. It's like... It's like... It's like... Trimming your nails with an angle grinder or uh, lighting a cigarette with a flamethrower is kind of a bit of overkill. Right, now as I've gonna, I'm not going to get any more work done. I've taken my visor off. I'm not going to get any more work done tonight. So I think what we should do is we should uh, put some things in here like this, you see. Get these in here like this, you see. Uh, and then what we need to do is we need to... I don't know what I put that in there for. Let's put that on there. I can put all the bits inside, it's kind of handy. I can put all these bits inside. Doo -doo 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 -doo. That bit will have to stay out there. That can go on there. <laughs> I can put it back in the cupboard till I work on it again next week. It's coming on nicely, it'll get there. I, I don't think I'll go the whole hog and give it a completely realistic weathering scheme because that's just silly talk. So I shall put that, I shall put that there for the moment. Right, so I think what we should do is we should do our stickers and wheel of giveaways so let me get three stickers out because i forgot because i am special uh, stick 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 stickers getting all the stickers out uh, phil lewis says it was great seeing the guys at the scale model world today hey phil welcome uh roadie hobby corners in welcome roadie hobby corner Everybody just turns up just in time for all the giveaways, don't they? I like that. Oh. Uh, and it, I did say at the start, I know you, you won't hear, but it's not going to be a full-length show tonight because it's a bit late and there is stuff I need to get on with. So uh, we'll only go for another half hour or so. So I should get my pen of sharpiness. Tell you what, I didn't think I would, but I'm actually enjoying painting those Chaos Marines. 
and the, the pox walkers. I could quite get into painting Nurgle. <laughs> it's quite cool. Um, but I'm hoping to get... I was hoping to have it done by now, but the next part 3B of the um, Warhammer Conquest series, I'm hoping to have that up maybe Monday, Tuesday. I didn't think it would take me the entire weekend to, you know, paint what I've painted so far. I thought it'd be like a quick few hours to get the basic coats on. It's not, it took forever. Did all the gold trim on those guys. You do 10 of them. Oh, it's forever. Right. Uh, you're making a cracking job of that fox, says Mark Skillmans. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Even though it's not got tracks. Uh, right, where are we? I'll put that there. So we're going to do the stickery giveaway. So before we do anything, um, don't forget as always, uh, what we're going to do. Yes, uh, I, I have got a couple of questions sent to me. Uh, if you want to guarantee a sticker, uh, then send me a question and answer to use in this section. Uh, and I, if, you, if I use your question and answer, I will send you a sticker. If you do, you need to send me the question. Send me an email to this email address here. Where is it? Where's the camera? fox at modelmakingguru.com send me the question the answer and your name and address if you don't need a sticker just say in the mail I don't need a sticker if you don't include your name and address I'm not going to send you a sticker but I'll read your question out but I won't send you a sticker because I'll assume you don't want one uh, uh, but yes so send me an email with your question and your answer and Dave make sure you put the answer in with the question yeah. uh, don't forget as always before we go and do these uh, we're still doing the stream boss battle which is up here you can see Aviad Madar is still the stream boss with 81,254. It's kind of dropped off. You've not been putting stuff through, so his health's kind of stuck at that for a while. Don't forget, you are battling for two to 300 quids worth of Games Workshop kits of your choice if you get Aviad down to zero. If you do it, because all the money you raise through that, or most of the money you raise through that, I take a little bit off myself, obviously. Uh, all, most of the money you raise through that goes towards the budget that then buys the kits that you want. And when Aviad did his, he got 280 quids worth of stuff. He got the Renegade Knights kit. He got the um, kill thing, kill team kit. He got some extra bits and bobs. So it's worth doing it. So get your get your tips going through the tip jar. Streamlabs.com forward slash model making guru. Get your super chats going with the dollar sign at the bottom of the super chat. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure to subscribe. And the more you put through as a, as a super chat, or the more you put through this tip jar, the greater the amount, the more health you take off Aviad. And whoever gets him down to zero becomes a stream boss and wins two or 300 quids worth or more, depending on how much you raise, of Warhammer stuff. So get your things in. It's kind of dropped off a little bit. Disappointment time. Because it's the longer he's the stream boss, is the longer that one of you guys wins 300 quids worth of stuff. And it could be whatever you want. Right, so anyway... Uh, where are we? Right, let's get this done. So before we do any questions and answers, you need to refresh your browser and then drag the draggy thing across the right hand side. So do that now. Do your refreshing and dragging. I shall sit over here with a coffee. Ah, I shall give you a moment. No more stream boss. Let's put Fox through doctor training. Trust me, the last person you want going anywhere near any part of your body with anything sharp is me. Uh, Colin says, mine due to be sent soon as well as some extras, I will PM you. Wait, oh, you, you, hey, what? Mine due to be sent soon. Mine due to be, what are we talking about, Colin? I don't know what you mean. Uh, Beyond Hope says, Fox, I've watched your ultrasonic cleaning video of the day and got myself one. Any suggestions as to what cleaning fluid and how to, much should I use for my airbrushes? I found uh, a few drops of just any old airbrush cleaner in the water usually works fine. I actually stopped using mine because at the end it was just faster just to clean it with some airbrush cleaning brushes. And um, the other thing is, of course, I've got a trigger brush. And I wasn't really keen on dunking that. I didn't want to take this out every time. And I wasn't keen on dunking that in the water, so I didn't use it in the end. I stopped using it. But uh, yeah, just some just standard airbrush cleaning fluids. Uh, the Medea airbrush cleaner is probably one of the better ones. Just be careful putting thinners and stuff in there because obviously it heats things up and the last thing you want is burning or exploding. So water and maybe some, or even just dish soap, but you want something that's got a bit of kick to it. So um, you know, a little bit of airbrush cleaner, maybe something like that. Uh, yes, Colin, I don't know what you mean by your, by your some to sent soon. Mine due to be sent soon, don't know what that means. Tell me, tell me. Right, are we ready? Uh, let's do some questions. So we do have some questions. Uh, we had some questions sent in. I just need to wake my keyboard up. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Interzone 88 saying, Hi Fox, hi everyone. Hey dude, or dudette. I, can... I have to apologise. For a lot of you, I don't know if you're male or female, and even if I do, I usually forget. Uh, so, 
Don't ever be offended if I call you dude or dudette and get it wrong. Right. Okay, let's have a look. Right, we have a question from the Mad Stig. Uh, this kind of rate relates into, I think, um, either last week's e-model show or last week's this show when we talked about Trumpton and stuff. <laughs> so this is kind of one for UK viewers or if you're in, outside the UK, you might have to Google it. I didn't know this. We read this is for the first sticker. So here we go. Uh, TV show Trumpton. Remember the children's TV show Trumpton? I'm going to speak slowly so you've got time to Google it. Trumpton. By the way, those of you, my American followers, who don't realise this, you do know in the UK, Trump is another word for fart. I just thought I'd, you'd find that amusing. <laughs> That's why we, even if we could take him seriously, we couldn't take him seriously. Uh, in the series, the TV show Trumpton, 1970s British television, what is the name of the officer in charge of the troops at Pippin Fort? Go. I didn't know any of this. I didn't even remember there was a fort called Pippin Fort. What was the name of the officer in charge of the troops at Pippin Fort? How do you get a Team Inept sticker, says James Lorimore. Uh, you just say to Team Inept, dude, send me a sticker, you gimp. Paul, send James a sticker. Uh, let's have a look. We have straight in with Phil Lewis says Captain Snort. Yes, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that at all. I had no idea. I nearly put Phil Snort. <laughs> Phil Snort then. There we go. Now, of course, I'm writing your name on the back of this sticker. There is no guarantee you will be get that sticker because all I do is put these in a pile and then do them all one by one. So, one of you somewhere will one day will win a sticker with Phil Lewis written on the back. Captain whatever says Lynn, uh, Lynn Dipple. <laughs> uh, what about gross model still stickers? Chris, talk to James about gross model stickers. There you go. Uh, yes, gross models is Chris. Team Inept is Chris and Paul. Right, so well done. Uh, the Mad Stig says he doesn't actually need the sticker. So there you go. Thank you very much for that Mad Stig. Very much for your question. Awesome, awesome. Uh, now we have... Uh, there's another sticker somewhere. George, what's that one? George Flaughter uh, did send me a question a couple of weeks ago that I keep forgetting to ask because it was halfway down my inbox. So we have a question from George. Uh, and here's, no, don't need to do that one. So here we go. Ready for this one? Ready? Okay. Grimlock is the badass leader of the Dinobots. This is this is American children's TV. Now we're doing every side of the comp of the. Uh, of the of the ocean grimlock is the badass leader of the dinobots name the other four standard members can you name the other four members of the dinobots <laughs> unfortunately i've got to keep going between the chat and the things there's four things i've got to remember here uh, 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 and that one okay this is going to take a few seconds for people to get the get the, the names in. Uh, Earl D got gets it right with snarl, swoop, sludge, and slag. Snarl, swoop, sludge, and slag. Yes, well done, Earl D. Earl D. There we go. So there's a sticker that somebody at some point will win that says LD on the back. <laughs> Not necessarily LD. Uh, remember, if you have won something before, um, still send me an email. You need to send me an email at modelmakingguru at gmail.com. Uh, and just tell me what you've won. Say, hey, Fox, I have won a sticker. Please send it to me. Here is my address. I don't keep your addresses. If I've sent you something before, as soon as I send it, I delete your email, your email with your address next. I don't need to keep your details, your personal details. So, And even if you you're waiting for a sticker already send me another email i haven't yet got around to sending out all the stickers and prizes from the last couple of weeks i haven't had a chance yet so they'll be going out so even if you're waiting for one just send me another email so if, if you send me three emails and i've got to send you three stickers so there you go uh george gabriel says put george you can't answer your own questions paul george ringo and the other guy <laughs> i don't know uh, and nobody else answered that one well done <laughs> dear uh right so george well done that's that one there uh, right. Uh, 
find one more question for you. Uh, Pascal Leavers did mail me to say there is actually a digital codex. I was saying last week you can't get digital codices or codexes uh, for the Warhammers. And you can. You can download them off the uh, Warhammer website. You have to pay for them. But you can get them for your iPad or your iPhone. So I might do that. Um, just so I've got it on my iPad and can take my iPad to the Warhammer store and play. The only downside is it doesn't get any updates. It, it'd be a shame. It would be great if they actually updated it. So you get, you'd just download it. It updates with any changes. But it doesn't, unfortunately. Uh, Andy McLeish sends me some questions. Let's have a look and see what these are. Uh, right, here we go. Uh, I'll ask one of these, because not everybody might have seen the video. Uh, here's a question. This is uh, sent to us by Andy McLeish. It's about me. Yes, which is always a brilliant, brilliant subject for questions. Okay, so question. Ready? Question. What has Fox chosen to do as part of a new e-model series that will definitely be more than six episodes? Go. What will I, what will I be doing as my next e-models build series that will definitely be more than six episodes? If I get it done in six episodes, I'll never hear the end of it. Dude, what will I be building? That's the question. I'm looking for the specific, specific... Uh, George Gabriel is in there with Millennium Falcon. Yes, well done, George. Again, with the winning things. George. Uh, awesome, well done. Yes, I will be building the perfect grade Millennium Falcon. Will be my next e-models build. So, George, I'll add that to all the stickers and stuff I've got to send you. <laughs> I've got tons to send you. Um, the, the irony is, right, George, you've, I think you've got about three. You've got three stickers and that prize coming to you at the moment. The, the irony is I know that. But what I'll do is I'll get an envelope and I write your name, address, and I'll put a sticker in and seal it, and then I'll go. Oh, you've got, oh, I've got another one. I'll always forget. So you might get like a box with your prize, and then like three different envelopes that I've just forgotten every time. I've, if I was sensible, I put everything in one envelope, but I just forget. I go, I've done it. And, oh. Yeah. So well done to everybody who won. Uh, let's have a look. Scooby Doo bust with a hot dog. Says Earl D. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I used to do. I used to do a Scooby Doo impression. I can't do it now. Zasta says a 112 scale Millennium Falcon that he's parking in the back garden to use as a shed. Oh yeah, life and times with Fox says James Larimore. So well done. That's another pile of stickers with people's names on. That no guarantee they'll actually get those stickers. Uh, I'm gonna have a swig of coffee. No. So that's the stickery stickery stuff done. So let's have a look. Where are we up to now? I think it's time for. This isn't going to work now, watch. Yes, it's time to spin the wheel. <laughs> do tell me if you can. I hope you can still hear me. I had to redo all the microphones and stuff. It's that time. Last week, you remember, George won the um, set of three uh, books, I think. I've actually forgotten what it was you won, George. Some books of some shit. I don't know. Some books, I think. I think it was some Warhammer books. George won those last week. Now, if you remember, we're doing this every other week now. We're not doing it every single week uh, because that's just far too damn expensive. Uh, so we're doing it every other week. But this week is a pick the prize week. Uh, and then next week, we will pick the winner of whatever comes out today. So it is time to make the annoying noise. We have a selection of... I've only got a few on there. I've still got a load of other stuff in storage in the spare room. Don't worry. I've just not got around to get any of it out yet. So I've only got a few things left in the box until I put more stuff in it. So, this is what we've got so far. We've got randoms, the Germans, not a gumpler, spesmarines, 40k rules, or squidgy plane. What can any of those be? I know. So, anyway, let's find out. So, uh, we shall find out who's going to win. So, let me get the right thing going. And we shall make the most awful noise in the world. Are you ready? Three, a two, a one. I hate that noise. I hate that noise. Let's see what we get, we get, we get, we get. What do we get, what do we get, what do we get? Come on, something good, something good, something good. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Squidgy plane, yes. Right. <laughs> it's small and cheap for me to post. Yes, I like this. Okay, so that is the prize this week is the squidgy plane. So let me just come back out of there. Yeah. 
Yes, that's the official that's the official closing down the wheel music. So that means that the prize that we'll be giving away next Monday, pulling the winner next Monday, is Yes, the VF one A J Valkyrie egg plane from Hasegawa. How cute! Yes, awesome, awesome, awesome. It's a bit squashed. Why is that squashed? So it's this little tiny tiny macro it's not even on camera. Macross Valkyrie egg plane kit. This is what the prize will be. I'm just going to refresh the chat because it seems to have stopped. Uh, in which you get this tiny, tiny, but adorable, as Zadsta says, kit with approximately all the decals in the world. How many decals? It's got the millions of them. Thousands of them. Even TK would like this one. It's got more decals than most of the things TK makes. So it's tiny, tiny. Look at the size. I mean, that's the cockpit there. It's a bit overexposed, but the size of that. And of course, it was Hasegawa that started out all the egg plane craze, so it's going to be top notch. Look at all the decals on there. There's tons of them. TK, that's got more decals than anything you ever make. It's ridiculous. Uh, the instructions. Uh, Zazda says more decals than plastic parts, pretty much. The instructions are basically <laughs> done. Stick together three or four bits and done. There you go. That's just totally cute. And that's... That's like a Vercar. That's got more nonsense on it than a Vercar kit. This is fantastic. I don't know. Uh, right, so that's what you can win. So that's what the prize will be. So... I'm going to see if I can get that box back on there without squishing it. So you can win the uh, VF1AJ Valkyrie. It actually looks quite big on here because it's zoomed in, but that's how big my hand is. It's not a big kit. There you go. Uh, it's a limited edition. Ooh, I didn't notice that. Limited edition. Uh, Does it say anything at all? Contains parts for one model kit. Paint and glue are not included. Do, 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 do. And all the rest in Japanese. So... That's what you can win. So, how do you win this fine item of small, tiny eggness? Very, very simple. Uh, Jamie Bones in. Hey, Jamie. Uh, hi, Jamie Bones says, hi, everyone, an egg plane. Yes, this is the prize for next week, so you've just come in in time. So, if you want to win this Macross Valkyrie, I don't suspect that it transforms into the into the go-walk type. Uh, if you want to win this tiny dose of just awesomeness and adorbs. Uh, all you need to do is wait till this episode is finished uh, which will be very shortly. Wait till this episode is finished give it 5 or 10 minutes so it becomes a normal video. And by the way people have asked me when, when this episode finishes why do my videos kind of start halfway through they always do. It seems to start from like 2 hours from the end backwards. So if you want to watch the whole thing you have to wait like 2 hours for it to render the whole thing out really annoying I don't know why they do that but there you go so yes give it give it five or ten minutes after the show finishes then this will be a normal video pop along and stick a comment on this week's show and all I want you to do is put uh, an amusing but not necessarily accurate fact about eggs so an amusing but not necessarily correct doesn't have to be correct fact about eggs there you go. So that's all you need to do. Put a comment on. And the next Monday, we'll, Monday? No, Sunday. Next Sunday, we'll come along and we'll pull a winner who will win this thankfully cheap to ship anywhere in the world kit. Yes, I've got a box that will fit in. The other thing with sending prizes out right now is I'm running out of boxes of the right size. So, yeah. Uh, so, yes. Comment on this week's video uh, after it's finished. Just saying an amusing but not necessarily accurate fact about eggs. And that's the prize for this week. So, there you go. Well done to whoever wins that next week. Uh, let's have a quick look at what chat's doing, then we'll call it quits then. Uh, I've been quite, quite, I talk quite fast tonight, I do apologise, I'm quite, because it's late, I'm quite hyper, so I probably waffled on at top speed, so I do apologise. Andy McLeese says, I missed the questions, damn it, no. Uh, dang it, when I'm about to go to school, says Beyblade Master. Uh, do, 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 scramble the egg play, la. I think he's over-egging it. Don't egg him on. Win it by naming every member of White Snake ever. Or Deep Purple Rainbow, says uh, Colin. They're cracking. Eggs are square. I knew you were going to say exactly that. Fart jokes. It all starts with eggs. <laughs> yeah, we've just set off a whole thing there, haven't we? You've all come out of your shell now. <laughs> I don't know. 
can't take you guys anywhere. Right, well, I'll be honest with you. I'm not going to get any more work done tonight. So I think what we'll do is we'll call it a show. Um, but if there's anything else I need to do, don't forget, of course, tomorrow night is Monday night. Me and Chris, and maybe Ted, I'm not sure yet, but definitely me and Chris will be doing the eModels uh, live show tomorrow night at 9 p.m. GMT. Got it right, got it right. 9 p.m. GMT. So definitely me and Chris, possibly with Ted. Uh, and we'll do more e-model stuff. Uh, I will hopefully get part 3B up of the Warhammer thing, the Warhammer Conquest thing in the next couple of days. I need to finish painting them. Um, and then I really need to get back on with Jordan's um, Strike Rouge Oratory. I've not had a chance to get on with it and I'm getting behind on that. I need to get that done because Jordan's waiting for it dead patiently. I do apologise, Jordan. And then when Jordan's done, I need to do George's Cesabi. So... Ooh. But uh, yeah, so join me tomorrow night for the um, e-models show. Hopefully, the uh, oh, my words aren't working tonight. I really my words just not just not working. I'm just gonna put that pen in there. I do apologise if I've talked at top whack tonight. I don't know why. I'm kind of really tired. These late night shows are great fun, but it kind of makes me tired. So I do tend to talk twice as fast and talk four times as much rubbish. <sighs> right, so anyway, yes. Um, tomorrow, e-models, 9pm GMT. I'll get the uh, next Conquest uh, video up in the next day or two. And the next Strike Rouge, which I've still got to finish doing the decals on that. Uh, and then we'll crack on with the stuff. So thank you very much for watching. Do take care of yourselves. If you want a sticker or something tonight, make sure to send me an email to uh, fox at modelmakingguru.com. I don't know where to point. Where is it? There it is. I nearly said Ted at eModels. <laughs> yeah, send me an email to ted at eModels.co.uk. Um, there's something else I was going to tell you. Ba -ba 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 I can't remember what it was. No idea. No idea. I can't remember at all. Uh, Colin says, thank you for sharing your work with us. No problem, my friend. No problem at all. Uh, I, I'm quite happily sit here and talk at top, well, top speed to everybody. Uh... Anyway, yes, so I shall, I shall bugger off. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Do take care of yourselves. Uh, until next time, as always, don't forget, go make something awesome. Go be awesome. Yes, you there. Go be awesome. And until next time, adios amoebas. No, that's not the right music. I messed that up, didn't I? <laughs> Arse.